Uh, this meeting is being uh, taped and broadcast. Um, we're going to begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Anne, would you be willing to lead us? Okay, so we're going to begin. A first item on the agenda is a presentation by the Library Board about a possible private donation to fund a library renovation and expansion, expansion project and to fund ongoing operation costs associated with the renovation pro project. Um, and you, you're going to be representing the board? Yes. You, can you come on up? <laughs> tell us basically the way how about briefly tell us um, you know what you're here for um, why you're coming before us and, and briefly um, what you'd like the board to do as a result of this meeting okay first of all we thank the selectmen for letting us come tonight I know it was a little bit earlier than usual and I thank everybody who showed up, especially members of the library board, thank you. This meeting is about a, a private donation that, that you and Karen Tatarka and Hannah have been working on for months. It's um, a, a private donation that is going to be uh, for the purpose of expanding uh, arts and crafts in the library and the Hannah will explain everything. It, 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 what we want to do is we want to get your approval for this project, and then we can move it forward. Fantastic. So let me give everybody a brief history of kind of how we got here. It's been a meandering sort of road, but it's been a fascinating one, and I think very fruitful as of this point at least. So um, unfortunately, a wonderful gentleman who's one of our citizens in town passed away and had a rather extensive estate and no heirs. So he reached out to a friend, well, before he passed away and after in, in, in legal documents, he reached out to a friend of his, uh, Mr. Dick Ornstein, who was basically charged with, with administering his estate. He's the executor. Um, Mr. Ornstein was looking at ways to sort of propagate his, his friend's legacy and to make sure that the estate, the, the, the remainder of the estate was put forward towards something that would be reminiscent and, and a good uh, indication of who his friend was. So he first reached out to Western Arts to, to ask them, hey, you know, I've got, you know, this chunk of money and I'm, I'm interested in deploying it in Weston. Do you have any ideas what we can do with it? Um, they had some ideas, but it was, you know, of, of a limited scale, that, you know, create endowments for education, things like that. So they decided to uh, contact Town Hall. They reached out to Jonathan, they started discussing it. Jonathan started thinking, reached out to me, and uh, we started coming up and brainstorming various different projects around town that we could possibly develop and, and, and uh, cultivate. We had proposed things like a, a new senior center, community type center, um, stuff at Lachat, and none of these have been precluded yet. I'm just giving you the, all the options. Um, Extent, expansions to communication center and art center, things like that. The thing that, that, that Mr. Ornstein gravitated most towards through this initial process was some kind of expansion or enhancement of our library. So as a result of that, um, Mr. Ornstein hired Lions Plains architect, Hannah Prada, who uh, basically began uh, construction of design, not construction, design, began a design process with Mr. Ornstein to sort of bring to fruition sort of his vision uh, of what uh, his friend Dan Offutt, was his name by the way, a uh, wonderful gentleman lived here in town, um, would want and would sort of want to be remembered for. He was a, he was a very uh, prolific artist. He liked to work with multiple different materials, um, but had all sorts of interests all over the place. So, so we were sort of challenged with thinking of ways to sort of fit in with the library's programming. That's why Karen Tatarka 
was, was involved from basically day one to look at what kind of programming needs the library had because we really wanted to make this something that kind of dovetailed in with what was going on in town and filled any, any gaps we had. Um, and also make it a unique thing. He wanted this to be sort of a hallmark, something that would stand out, something that would rep represent sort of a, a leap forward and something that basically would, would bear his name, that part of the, 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 the edition would bear his name and really stand out and people would come and it would be kind of a landmark uh, project. So we spent a long time going back and forth to sort of create and we'll go into a little more detail, but we came up with a plan at that point and then the library board was brought in and got involved and um, at that point, at this point, I think I'm now going to let Hannah come up and sort of talk about, about what the project actually is. And then after that, I'm going to explain what steps we need to go forward with to actually bring this project to fruition if everybody's interested. And then we're going to answer questions that the board has about the project. So Hannah, I'm turning it over to you. Monday night. Um, it is a pleasure to present the project on behalf of the library to the Board of Selectmen. And, um, um, and thank you to Daniel and Danny of it, um, Charlotte and Trust for this opportunity to um, develop a concept for the addition to the Western Public Library. As uh, Chris mentioned, we work together um, collaborate, in collaborative, very collaborative way for the past uh, several weeks to um, come up with a concept. We took um, into the account several different factors and aspects that we felt were important that would um, fulfill um, the role and the um, mission of the trust, as well um, benefit the town and the community. And myself, having had three children here at the public schools, there was nothing um, more important that I thought that um, we should address. Um, let me, uh, so we started our work analyzing the existing conditions of the library, looking at the floor plan, looking at the, uh, the parking situation, looking at the circulation around the town, and brainstormed on the location of the potential addition. Um, we thought that uh, we would like to uh, maintain the frontage of the library as is. We thought that there is, that it's a very special and um, um, it's a very fa a fa a special facade that stands out architecturally and visually from um, any other um, part of architecture here in Weston and that we would like to maintain it. Um, also we looked at the, um, we looked at ge geographic location and um, different um, locations, southern exposure, northern exposure, east and west. And um, we decided to zone in here at the back of the library for the potential addition. And, and um, in the same time, we discussed uh, the program. And here, um, we, looked, we um, looked what is currently offered in terms of the programs at the library. And we thought that, um, that uh, extending the learning programs of the library might be a good move. Um, and, um, with that said, we have established uh, uh, some program requirements and uh, uh, decided to develop a makerspace um, type of facility. Um, and, and that would be one component. The second component would be uh, an, um, an exhibition space. And uh, also, um, as a third portion of the project, would be renovation of the existing community room. Um, while we were still, while we were looking at the library, we, um, you know, obviously it was very um, obvious to us that the ceilings, the size, and the proportions of the library are somewhat constrained. What they feel like, you know, it's dark, it doesn't have the same the volume that we would like to provide. Therefore, therefore, we thought that by um, utilizing the back of the library, we have the potential to we propose a taller structure with higher ceiling heights with additional storage. And um, here, in terms of the mass, we could make some massive studies. We thought that we could locate the structure here in the back against the hill and then provide an atrium place, atrium connector that connects the existing library with the new addition. 
Another important factor that um, we took to the account is the functional layout of the library. As we all know, the library just went, um, underwent the renovation and it was closed for several months, which was um, very unfortunate for those who um, uh, go to the library often. And uh, um, now we have a beautiful new space and we didn't want to further interrupt the activity of the library. We thought that by uh, proposing the addition here in the back, we would not impact the construction of the addition here in the back, would not impact um, um, uh, operations of the current library space. Um, it is also important that um, those two, the existing library and the proposed center could um, um, could run on different schedules um, and uh, whenever the library is open uh, there could be a clear circulation into the space and those two areas could uh, function together at the same time however with um, whenever the library is uh, closed uh, some of the programs here in the center could, could happen after hours and it could be a clear connect, connection or door that um, uh, provides a barrier and divides those two, um, two uh, areas and lets them function on its own. Uh, when we looked about, uh, we talked about the design and uh, the aesthetics of for the building. As Chris mentioned here, it was important that um, the project that we post has its own identity and has become and is a hallmark for the community for, of here in Weston. Uh, we again looked at the um, existing building and um, went uh, proposing um, uh, an architecture that's contemporary in style, however, it incorporates all the materials that are currently used um, at the library exterior. So we, we were transitioning, we're um, moving out of the stone um, exterior material and, and also providing a lot of glazing here to the back. Um, one of the um, challenges that we were facing was the circulation. Clearly we don't have, uh, the parking is limited and we did not uh, want it to uh, change, uh, decrease the amount of parking more than it's absolutely necessary. Um, we are losing three parking spots here in the back, but we're able to maintain a certain current circulation around that provides uh, access and um, uh, uh, Pretty much the um, the flow of of, uh, of the of uh, the cars maintains the same. Uh, in terms of the layout of the floor plan, uh, we the the project has four different areas. Uh, there is an entry avenue, which is an entry from uh, the west side, which is the same side as all other entries to the library. We walk in through the glaze connector here on the, in the uh, maker space. We're walking into the space which we call our um, dirty and dry space where we will um, offer a lot of programs that are uh, related to maker space, uh, 3D printing, um, pro programs for um, all the community audience of all ages that um, um, that will be happening throughout the day. Um, number three is our dirty and um, dirty and wet space and this will be a classroom for um, various activities and various programs um, where you know the development of art painting and graphic design <coughs> sorry graphics uh, and then we have uh, also a digital lab here in the back, number four. Uh, one one uh, additional person that was here involved with uh, with helping us coming up with the program was Fred Herbs, who uh, is a digital, uh, 
he's the director of digital innovation, digital learning innovation at the Western School Schools, and uh, he has suggested to add a recording booth, which we did here uh, in the in the corner. Uh, obviously, we're adding some more um, restrooms, circulation connector from one side, from the new side, over to the outside of the library, and um, we are renovating the existing community room. Uh, the renovation of the existing community room will, will include relocation of the storage area, opening the northern facade and the <coughs> natural lighting in the space, uh, upgrade to the interior finishes, and upgrade to the uh, lighting and the mechanical systems as needed. On the other floor, we were able to um, offer more storage for the library, also a print room to support the maker space activities that are happening on the first floor. And this is where some of the equipment is stored that's either too large to um, fit into the space or simply too sensitive to be open to the general public. Uh, the tiny room and some additional <coughs> supply storage. Uh, it was important, and here we work with, with Karen, to um, make sure that the space is available and um, can be used by uh, groups of all ages. And uh, um, here, with you know, the idea is that we don't really have, uh, you know, we don't have the kind of program um, um, in place. But the idea is that we will work to offer programs that will run throughout the day, and you know, will. Um, some of the programs, some of the existing programs, major space programs, will um, be relocated to this area, offered to preschoolers and also seniors. And then for um, for us to offer school activities, this space will um, act as a teen center or offer programs for children who um, want to explore their interests after school. Uh, interest of maker space in about related programs. Um, those are the um, exterior elevations that, that illustrate and actually um, add here to the space and also uh, the building behind. Here is um, a view from the town hall of the existing library and how it, uh, the composition works with the uh, what we're proposed, what we're proposing. Here is uh, a close-up to the entry of the space. As you can see, a very modern facade, a transparent uh, facade that takes you into the building and automatically um, signals um, about the um, role and function of um, the building that it serves. And this is a view from Norfolk Road that um, illustrates that uh, the addition is almost invisible from, from the road. So it's somewhat like it's a surprise when you pull in, the building will feel the same from the road as this would use you pull in and turn the corner, this new addition will um, be very pronounced, will somewhat be surprising to be pronounced. <clears throat> this is the um, the view of the atrium that illustrates how that glazed atrium really is the nice bridge between the nature and the exterior and all the activities that are happening here in uh, the makerspace uh, program. And this is uh, a rendering of um, the makerspace that illustrates different areas and so um, shows how vibrant and uh, um, active the space can become. In terms of the interior finishes, we um, focused on uh, re research uh, finishes that are uh, uh, fitting with the purpose of the space. Uh, so durable, uh, yet um, are uh, aesthetically pleasing and cohesive with the rest of the uh, project. Uh, I would encourage everybody to come closer after, after the meeting and take a closer look at the boards and I'll be um, more than happy to answer any questions. So, 
I think the way, and again, uh, I'm open to suggestions, but I'm going to briefly now talk about what steps we have to go through, how we got here, and specifically what we have to do, and then I'm going to open it up to questions from the, to, from the board to either me, to the library, to Hannah, to Karen, or to Jonathan um, to get some details. So, like we said at the beginning, this, this arose out of a gift. Right now, you know, there's kind of a question, what is the gift? At this point, we're talking about somewhere around $5 million. Which sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but that $5 million has to both go towards construction of this piece, and it's, we're talking about about 2,800 square feet of new construction, as well as a good amount of money be left over for an endowment to keep it running for a number of years. And that, that number of years has yet to be fully finalized or determined. We have a lot of work to go to dig down with uh, to find those, those pieces of information. The other thing that's kind of we need to talk about is that this project and the reason the library board has come for us is because under the state statutes, chapter 190, thank you, Amy Sanborn, um, <laughs> uh, section 11-33, um, which, which talks about the powers and duties of trustees and municipalities, gifts related to libraries, uh, related to trustees are under exclusive control of the construction of any library building. Basically, we talked to town council, town attorney about this um, in detail. We went back and forth, and it's clear that the library board is the, is the governing party in this. They're the ones who are, sort of have to sign off on things. They're, those are the ones who have to initiate the conversations, and they are controlling sort of the purse strings in this. Um, to that extent, the, we did present this to the library board. They had made some decisions already. <coughs> They, in concept, approved moving forward with this idea. They are generally supportive. Um, they agreed on a memorandum of agreement that I'll talk about in a second, um, which is the document we need to give to Dick Ornstein, the trustee of the, of the Dan Off of the State, um, to basically enter into a contractual agreement so that we say, we agree to do this, you give us this amount of money by this time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that needs to be in place before the town starts doing anything. You know, town is, is, is not going to invest a whole lot without a formal agreement in place. And the third thing they did was uh, uh, agree to appoint a committee to manage this. Because normally, and this isn't normal, you know, the town has a building uh, project. We have different boards and, and committees that sort of manage it. This needs to be, can't be done by the full library board because people need to be available and we can't have quorum issues popping up. And then we also wanted representation on this sort of newly created subcommittee, which is a building and uh, a construction and design committee um, that had representation from, well, I would be on it as a non-voting chair, given my background and experience with the whole project and making sure everything keeps running and my ability to coordinate stuff. But I would not be voting. We are, as selectmen, are only allowed to be ex officio on boards. Um, there would be three members of the library committee, and I believe you already voted on those members, but yes. they're going to go back and vote on the whole things. But at this point, the library decided it would be Amy Jansen, Ann Hunt, and Amy Sanborn would be the vice chair of the committee. Wonderful. We couldn't have better people serving. Um, we're going to have two members of the building committee, which you, you will be deciding on shortly. Uh, one member of the Board of Finance to make sure that when we do this endowment piece, that everybody is comfortable with that endowment piece and it makes sense long term that, you know, this isn't going to be something that we can say, hey, this is great, but end up costing the town a lot and being a big mistake. And then potentially one at large member. So that said, we have a bunch of steps to go through as with any projects, but, but we intend to sort of work and shepherd this through. We've been in extensive discussions on this and we will continue to be the, this, ad, this specialized board will probably be meeting on a weekly basis during the daytime and you know change orders and all sorts of stuff will come up so that we're going to be really dedicated to that so the first thing we have to do obviously the library is taking care of their piece for now the first thing we're going to do is tonight's meeting hopefully the board of uh, selectmen will express their support and refer the project to two different uh commissions planning and zoning for 8-24 again the town is exempt from uh, zoning regulations. However, we do have to, and we should, and we'd like to go to the town for we, what's called an 8-24 referral, which is where they render an opinion about the appropriateness of the specific activity on a specific piece of land. So we're gonna go, go 
go to them if you guys so deem it's a valuable thing to do. And the other really important uh, phase of this is we have to go to the Historic District Commission. This is in the town, uh, core town center area, the, the, the core kind of uh, municipal district, and they do have a massive say in what goes on here. Uh, we're hoping that they consider this complimentary and this works. We're open to suggestions. If they don't think it is, why it might be, um, but they are going to be an integral part of the process. Their process involves a public hearing, as does the planning and zoning to the most extent. So there's going to be two opportunities in the near future with two different boards guiding us where we're going to get more public input. So that's step one. Step two, uh, we have to have this memorandum of agreement, which the library board has already approved and the board of selectmen has already basically approved in concept that we now, I've now submitted to Dick Ornstein. He's got to get back to us and go to his lawyers. Both sides, it's going to be signed by both parties. And, and, and both sides have to be comfortable with the funding arrangements, which means he's comfortable that we're not going to waste his money and we're comfortable that we have enough money to do what we need to. Um, two, three, planning and zoning approval, four, historic district approval. We might do those two simultaneously depending on what the timing looks like and, and everything. Um, then the special town meeting. The town has to have his voice in this, right? The town has to say, do we like this or not? Um, and that will be another uh, opportunity for the town to speak out and the town's voice to be heard. And then um, the other thing is, which I already mentioned, is the library board subcommittee will have to manage this project to completion. So after, even after all those approvals, um, the library board, whose membership I just sort of elaborated on, will have to probably, it will be impaneled a lot earlier than that so that we can start discussing all these steps along the way. Um, but they'll have to be in shape in doing that. So now I'm going to open it up to questions from my colleagues about Hannah, Ann, Amy, uh, Jonathan, Randy, if you want. <laughs> I, have and, a I have a question. Sure. Have a question. Um, thank you so much for the presentation and all the work that you've done. It's really beautiful work. Um, I have, and it may be too deep, you know, I may be going down the rabbit hole, maybe a little too deep. Um, right now, um, but as you know, we take the fact that we're a green town very seriously, and um, I understand that you said you wanted to use materials that were in line um, with the fabrication of the original structure. Um, are you going to be able to have some sort of lead certification in the extension and still use those materials and still be able to, you know, keep it a little more green? Uh, well, you know, absolutely. I think, you know, here the hope is that we will um, be designing this building um, up to the lead standards. Um, you know, it's um, here too early to discuss if we will be pursuing certification, uh, but it is not uncommon to design some stand to standards without pursuing the certification. Uh, you know, when it comes to sustainability, which is, you know, very close to me, and uh, I'm not sure if you know, I've been um, a lead um, credit professional for over 10 years, and I've worked on several lead certified projects. Um, it is important to look at several factors. Um, and you know, here the site selection, uh, the materials, which are one factors, but it's really um, critical to design a building that's um, um, as energy efficient as possible. And um, by uh, the location of the addition um, and the use of uh, the windows, and the use of mechanical systems, the use of green materials that um, have low VUC and are not mm -hmm. gassing will be taken to the account, yes. Thank you. You can go next. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, I don't really have any questions, but I have a, I have a number of uh, comments, all of them positive. Um, first, I'd, I'd like to thank the, uh, the Offit Estate for making this gift. This is an extraordinary gift. We've been blessed here in town by two uh, very generous, at least two very generous estates, uh, Frank Vitale and now uh, Dan Offit. Uh, who clearly felt very, very close to the town, and I think is a credit to uh, to our small town uh, community nature. Um, I'd also like to thank Mr. Ornstein for thinking of us and thinking of this, and, and you, Hannah, for this, I think, uh, fantastic design. The library, I think, is one of the most distinctive buildings in Weston. Um, probably um, uh, forms uh, people's image of the town more than any other building. The Onion Barn often gets Top Billy. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll, but uh, it ought to be in library. And I think, you know, I don't know 
very much about architecture at all, but I know that when you're working with a distinctive building or an old building and you want to add to it, there's really two ways to go. One is imitation, um, and the other is uh, adding a contemporary wing, as, as you've done. And I think that's uh, far more appropriate to the building and far more appropriate to the site. And I very much appreciate that you've uh, complemented the two uh, sections will complement each other and you've kind of parallel materials, parallel use of glass. I think very, very effectively. Um, and then also uh, the fact that this is a uh, arts and innovation building, I think speaks to Weston's kind of its first rebirth, I think, early in the last century as an artist colony. I think to have the library be focused on, on arts as well as books is, uh, is perfect for Weston. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Um, and you could, you know, absolutely everything that you just mentioned about the design approach is very much in line with our needs and how we about the, uh, the concept here. Yeah, and it's going to be, the beauty of it is it's going to have crafts available, partially driven by Dr. Craig Conks at the schools for, for some of the digital innovation, but also driven by some of the needs for town, for not the kids, not the school kids, but for the seniors. So there's going to be a craft room where you can do pottery, there's going to be knitting, all sorts of stuff, you know, when it's really going to be kind of, you know, one of the many hubs around town. We have, we have Lachat, we have the Historic Society. We're going to have this. Hopefully we have a senior center. Hopefully we're going to do a lot more if we can in the future. Um, but I, again, as long as you're thanking people, I, I want to thank everyone. There's an immense amount of work that went in, especially uh, Karen um, and Craig Tonks and, and Jonathan. But just an amazing amount of, of volunteer work up to this point. This has taken many iterations. It's taken many meetings, driving all over the place. And thanks for thanking me. <laughs> throw it out there. Um, any uh, questions for John? Me? Library board? Thoughts? My, 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 one, of my, one of my biggest concerns was energy efficiency and making it using the old materials is the green component, because I, I knew Hannah's history. So I wanted you to talk about that. You know, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's always a challenge. And I think, you know, but when we look at the, what, the, what the building will be, right, which will be the center for innovation and design, the word innovation almost you know, forces us to think about the architecture as well as about standards for, mm -hmm. um, for building design. And um, energy efficiency and a care for environment and is uh, the factors that we cannot uh, um, neglect here. So. And, and you've mentioned previously that there'll be things like on those large glass walls, which I see as you know, energy bill, but you'll have motorized lines on there and specialized UV films and all those, all of the new, newest, greatest technology to sort of do you know, HVAC control. Well, absolutely. I think you know, we're fortunate that you know, we have this um, large um, north exposure and it's perfect for an um, art exhibition. Because you know we're not, we it's we will get a lot of natural light but without the glare. Yet on the occasion where uh, it's needed, we will have a, a motorized line that uh, uh, will go down and will uh, make uh, the environment within the atrium and within the maker space comfortable. So just a couple little things. That extra little part where the wet room is and where the uh, digital graphics are that yeah. is actually going into the the hill they're going to dig it out would yeah. you mean where the booth is no no the back the two back rooms see how they're oh, the two back rooms are actually yeah they're yeah, going to dig into the hill okay so obviously we have a lot of conversations about water mitigation and control. yeah 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 we, we we actually had the town engineer in early to discuss with Hannah, he's very intimately involved and with, fire and has been intimately involved in the past with drainage issues in that area. So that's just one thing I'm taking for the fire marshal, the building official, have already spoken with Hannah about that. It's an amazing project, just amazing. No, the key was here just to really, you know, make this program as comprehensive as it can be. And um, the site is not an easy site to work with. Um, and there are, there's not a lot of footprint that we can um, take over for that project. That's why going here into the hill seems like the best, the best approach. Uh, we have analyzed the topography and, um, you know, with um, the systems, with the drainage uh, 
appropriate drainage system. Um, we discovered that you can use this uh, um, back um, foundation wall as a retaining wall as well. And we can regrade some of the topography, some topography so it sheds the water away from the building. Uh, we hope that we can um, adopt and uh, um, beautify uh, the head. And here, as it uh, shows in one of the renderings, you know, as you can see, we have, um, there are extensive gardens planted in the hill that can color cook the water run off and also beautify the space. So you really are not just looking at the empty parking lot, but there's a beautiful um, garden to admire as well. Now, I will throw out there that it's not everything. I had lobbied for a basement movie theater in sports arena. <laughs> and right yeah, now, I was denied. Say, what's, not, what's not in this? I, I really tried, though, because I thought at lunch I could go and watch movies in there. But um, understandably, actually, the real reason is it, the ground is not great to dig in. So, and, But everything else is in there. And, and what sort of staffing do you think, additional staffing do you think we would need to? We're working on that. I think you're going to need uh, just one for full person uh, staff, and you're going to have to have other people who are part timers. There will be cameras in there because if you look at the location, that is separate from the rest of the library. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's going to have to be monitored. Right. And a specific type of library would be one with obviously technological expertise right. so we didn't go into a lot of detail about programming yeah and maybe Karen can shed some more light in on that but uh, there's going to be sort of high-end sort of design workstations CAD cam type of things um, all sorts of uh, 3d printers metal printers um, like Hannah mentioned there's going to be a podcast recording studio which was something that that Dr. Tom said mentioned that the students we're really interested in. It's sort of an extension. Apparently, after hours, a lot of the kids in sort of the robotics and other programs don't have a space where they can continue doing sort of the digital rendering and that stuff, and they can transition over here. We're going to have courses for seniors to you know, become help with digital literacy and that sort of thing. But it will obviously evolve over time. Like, who knows, 10 years from now, my guess is a lot's going to be augmented reality. So the other beauty of that, and I'll mention, is that if you look at the area where the rooms are going to be, there's one room, sort of this open flex space. Right. Then there's two other rooms in the back. Separating those are going to be movable glass walls. Oh, you mean the back two? The back two. Yes. So that whole thing can open up. It can close down. Right. The walls supposedly will have pretty good sound insulation, so stuff can go on in one room that wouldn't necessarily impact the other. The room in the top left corner is actually going to have a drain in the floor. So when you're doing that messy stuff, which is I'm obviously going to be in there doing with <laughs> finger paints or whatever I do. Um, you can hose it down and, and just drain it into the floor. So really, yeah. you know, thanks to Karen, I think everything was in the kitchen sink. And in fact, we're going to build the kitchen sink. <laughs> <laughs> we are actually building a new galley for for. There's going to be a little bit of a change because you notice that that in the white area is the existing community room. Right now, as any if everybody recalls, in the back of that community room is a wall with storage behind it. Um, and the door is sort of offset to one side. The idea was to build the storage rooms right outside of a central entrance. Um, one thing that's going to be critical with that, thank you, Lynn, is to make sure that the sound, the acoustics of that room do not change from its existing state because the acoustics are fantastic. So that's going to be like one of the early steps we look at to make sure that whatever we do, if we do anything, will not change the acoustics in there because they're so good. But if we can find a way to do it, and everybody can reassure us, and we'll get sound engineers and everyone to work on it, um, the idea is to refurb that room too. Uh, but part of that is going to be, if, if, if think about that community room as you're heading in, to the right is a coat closet. That's going away. So what's going to happen instead is you're going to have a passageway that's going to lead around the outside of that room directly into there. So if you think about people waiting for events in there, people standing out in halls, and all the types of stuff we have at speak ups and other meetings, there's going to be spillover places that aren't a cramped hallway kind of in there. And m m movement and flow is going to be much, much better. So, you know, on that note, I think, I think you hit it right on. Well, I think you know, the key also um, was here that, you know, um, as we know, um, there are a lot of meetings in the afternoons that are happening here on the campus. And sometimes we throw a 
it happens that the room is not available. And um, if the center is open after hours, after the library is closed, uh, there could be still an opportunity to use the community room for an additional gathering space. If it's for the event or for a meeting, and um, you know, without really um, interfering with um, um, the library. That said, I want to be mindful of time because we do have a Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen meeting coming up pretty soon. Um, let my colleagues ask final questions and then I'll ask you to consider motions. I'm good. <laughs> I would love a motion. Yeah. All right, I propose that the Board of Selectmen refer the proposed library renovation and expansion project to the Planning and Zoning Commission per state statute, section 8-24. Can I have a second? Set? Any discussion? Again, just thank you so much, and thank you, and thank you, and thank everyone so far. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Project Aye. moves. Aye. Uh, can I have the second motion uh, regarding the Historic District Commission? Um, I hereby refer the move that we refer the proposed library renovation and expansion project to the Historic District Commission for certification of appropriateness. Second. And again, same discussion. Thank you and thank everybody in advance who's going to be considering this coming up. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Margaret. Margaret? Yes, I'm just talking to the library work will be coming to speak up. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> there might be some questions on that. Okay. Although I think some stuff that's been floating around might be a big topic of conversation. <laughs> okay. Um, I think all we have left is uh, an adjournment. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank everyone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned until the next one in a few minutes.